who have some knowledge. How do you deal with people that come out and they claim to have some knowledge about Islam? And it seems like they deliberately try to mislead people. Have you dealt with people like this? Yes, you actually have. It is becoming a trend of, you know, evangelicals and people of this nature actually going to courses to learn about Islam, um, which is something that is a very, un, very hidden fact now that they have training courses where they teach people how to know about Muslims, even to a sense of how to become a Muslim outwardly and then send them to Muslim countries and convert them to Islam. You run into them here, or convert them from Islam to Christianity, and you run into them here, you know, people that claim knowledge of the Bible, even some people that are able to speak the language, they're able to quote the Quran, they're able to do these things, um, and they go against Islam. The only, the only thing that I can say about them is that their knowledge is not in order to gain knowledge. They, they have knowledge in order to be detrimental with the knowledge. So those people are not going to have that type of guidance. Those people I usually try not to discourse with because they're not coming to you in order to learn. They're coming to you in order to be uh, aggressively detrimental towards Islam. They have no purpose of, of getting guidance. Their heart is somewhat already closed. So with those people I try to more or less give them in a, a sense that the knowledge that you have you should first let it sink into your heart. Take it and re realize what you have in your own hands before you try to bring it to me. You know, which I did as trying to take the Bible to Christians. I first internalize it and see what does it mean to me. And then I'll take it to them. Rather than just learning it word by word and taking it and trying to bash them with it. Gotcha. Tell us, uh, Joshua, Yusha, on the Dean Show. Thank you for coming out again. No Being problem. with us. The Any next time. question I have for you is since you're in the... In the uh, area of Dawa, tell us how do you deal with situations when someone uh, tries to um, diminish or attacks uh, the Prophet's character, the last and final message of Mecca. How do you deal with these situations? So the way I deal with it, uh, being that I am experienced in the field of Dawa, and Dawa just means that invite. It's an Arabic word that means to invite someone, you know, that's, which is what you said earlier, that we're inviting. We're not forcing anyone to the religion. We're inviting them, just like you would invite someone to your home. They can accept or reject your, your invitation. Um, those people who bash the Prophet ﷺ, peace be upon him's character, which you find a lot more now, um, what I try to do or talk to them is tell them the evidence for his character is very clear. Go read it for yourself. Don't, don't read what you've read it from some Orientalist or some, you know, some agnostic or, or some Harvard scholar, some Oxford scholar. Go read the texts that were preserved from the time when he w was on this earth till now. They're preserved. They're there. His life story, this, his sayings, his teachings, the way he acted, the way he lived is there for us. Go read them and then make your own de decision. So for anyone to have gone and done that and then say something detrimental would, would to me would be extremely surprising because even people who are not Muslim who have read the Prophet's life like Michael Hart who wrote a book on the hundred most influential people in the world and chose Muhammad, peace be upon him, as number one you know, even though he wasn't Muslim you know, all of these things because it's there and it's pristinely preserved So I tell them, go read it for yourself Go read it and then come back and see if you can tell me the same thing and I most likely promise them that they cannot Okay, tell us, what are some of the biggest misconceptions that you think people have about Islam? I think the main misconception, not only is it the main misconception, but it is the main thing that Muslims should be focused on in clearing, is that people think that we worship another God. They think that Allah is some other God, it's some other deity. So we have to reiterate them over and over that Allah means the God who is the creator of everything that exists. He's the God of the Bible. He was the God of Adam, the God of Mo Moses, the God of Noah, Abraham, Jesus, peace be upon them all, and the God of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I think that is the main major misconception. And then also you have a lot of misconceptions about the gender issue in Islam. How women are viewed in Islam and how men treat women in Islam. And, and, I, you know, and I try to explain to the people over and over again that you know, how Islam liberates women. But it's hard for me to say it coming from a man's perspective, but a lot of times, you know, it's, it's good coming from sisters like when my wife tells a, a, another lady that my veil covering frees me from being subjugated to all of these things that you're subjugated to every day, whistling, people leering at you, people wanting to use you as a sex object, people, you know, lusting over you and wanting to rape you and things like this. It comes better from her. And then I try to explain to them that whatever a Muslim does to a woman that is detrimental is because 
is against Islam and not for it. So those are, I think, the two main misconceptions. And that we're always thinking of killing someone. <laughs> I think that's another main misconception, which is very easily cleared up by the verse in the Quran that whosoever kills one innocent life as though he's killed all of humanity, and whoever saves one innocent life as though he's saved all of humanity. So it's very clear in the book. It's very simple. If you go, go to the book, <clears throat> the verbatim word of God, the Quran, it's there. You, you come in with an open heart, you know, an open mind, humble yourself and just read. Ask God to guide you. Yes. And read. It's there. It's there unless you have some people that pick and choose verses yeah. and use them and construe the circumstances and things like that. That's not the right concept. If they go and read the book beginning to end, read it. Go to someone who has knowledge of the book and see what it really says. It's very clear in its own statements. Because if you want to cut and paste... To you can make it say anything. You can make it say anything. So I can make the Bible say anything. Exactly. Yeah. So... Tell us about this um, true gospel of Jesus. Um, go a little bit into it real quickly. Give us some glimpse of it. What, what I wanted to do was to go into the gospels, go into the, the four books that are written about Jesus' life, go into the red letter words from any Christian who knows what I'm talking about. The, in a Bible, if you open it in the New Testament, there'll be red letters which are denoting that these are quote, direct quotations of Jesus. Let's go into these words and see what he has to say. What I did was I threw everything else out and only referred to the red letters and said, okay, let me see what the, Jesus really spoke out of his own mouth. And when you read that, you start to see that it is a very different picture than what Paul said. It is a very different picture than what is taught by Christian theology today. It is a very different picture. And it is a picture that very much coincides with what the Bible says from Genesis all the way through. It's a very, very same message that Jesus said, God is one. I am sent from God. God is greater than I. And therefore, the only way to get to God is by worshiping Him alone. And I am the way to God. I am the prophet sent by God. Therefore, I am the way. I am the truth of God. And I am the light. I am that which is emanating from God. No one can come to God except through me because I am the one sent. It's a very clear message. So we go into the Bible and go through all of these verses and then I lay it out there for everyone and tell them that they can take it, dissect it, go research it, go try to disprove it, do whatever they want to with it and then come back with their own decisions. You're not discrediting, discrediting really anybody's uh, character. You're not bashing anybody. No. What you see many people doing about Islam and with Muslims. But yes. we're trying to build and at the end... Tell us, once you present this evidence, if the person chooses not to accept this as from the Creator, that's his free choice to do so. That's their free choice. We still deal kindly with, these, with people. We still don't bash them. And no, that's right. It's their free choice because, as I said, the dawah means to invite. 